I'm not a morning person. Dedicated to being passionate about it. Bodybuilders have become more lazy. People have always thought I lift fake weights. Iran and the United States. You take, you take responsibility for that. So yeah, I really want this interview. I want the new generation uh, that follow bodybuilding to really, you know, a lot of them know you, but I feel like a lot of them might not know the whole story. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them might not know me, know me. Yeah, I think uh, kids nowadays they don't really they don't really do this research. You know, they start from what's what's relevant now. And they really don't dig into their history um, on you know what bodybuilding is all about and you know how it started and you know where it's at now. How did we get there? You know, nobody we can really. Um, it's really hard to analyze. You know where you're going if you never know where 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 you've been. You know what's happened in your past. You know, so yeah. It's a little different nowadays. Yeah, but your story is amazing. You've you've competed you've competed in a in one of the best eras in bodybuilding, I think. Yeah, it was. I, I believe it was one of the toughest. Um, you know, I, I came through. Um, you know, I just had good people around me that showed me. Um, you know, a lot of the do's and don'ts, um, and you know how to how to you know really get through it. Back then, you know, people were really really competing. I mean, they were really getting it. And um, I was fortunate enough to, you know, to be around Flex Wheeler, and, you know, uh, Chris Cormier, Ronnie Coleman, and, uh, you know, even got a chance to even, um, you know, be with, around Kevin LeBron for a while. So, you know, that era, you know, coming through with the Nassers and all that, I was, I think I came through right when, um, you know, Nasser or somebody was kind of filtering down. Um, and then, you know, between, I think, like, you know, 90s, all the way through the 2000s. I mean, the, the competition was way different than it is now. Yeah, and, and Marcus Rule, Ronnie Coleman, all these guys, it was an amazing era. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, Marcus Rule was a, was a tyrant. That dude, he was a cool guy though. You know, he didn't talk a lot, you know, but uh, when he yeah, stepped on the scene, he was like, like Godzilla stepping into a, into a movie theater, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, big guy. But even with that, even with that competition, you've accomplished a lot. I mean, you were top five at Olympia, top five at Arnold. You, 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 you definitely you were up there. You were up there with, with the toughest, you know, meanest competitors. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Being the top five in the world is, I mean, it's nothing to shake a stick at. But you know, I was trying to win. You know, I mean, I came through. Uh, in my my mentality was, and it was taught. Um, it was embedded in me to to be the best. I mean, you go for the you go for the, go for the throat. You know what I mean? You go for first place, and if you end up being you know second, third, fourth, seventh, ninth, top ten, then okay. But you know, I was never complacent with the placings. I was always trying to beat uh, the physique I presented um, and beat everybody on stage, whoever they put me in front of. Um, and so, hopefully, that fight is still in these guys. Um, you know, I, I need to watch it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, that era was no joke. Mm -hmm. um, in the Olympia stage, that was the Super Bowl of bodybuilding, you know. Um, that was never taken lightly at all. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I saw an interview with you uh, from early 2000s where you're talking about competing, you know. And you really looked at, at, at it as a battle on stage, you know what I'm saying? Like, I talk to a lot of guys now and they're kind of like, well, I only care about what I look like, you know what I mean? When you were competing, you were like, I'm going there to kick this guy's ass. I'm going after Dexter. I'm going. I'm doing. Okay, you're really battling. That's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, it's a competition. So anybody that says, you know, well, you know, it's just I wouldn't say, you know, it's it's just ignorance. They don't know no better. Nobody's taught them that you know they think they Melvin Anthony's the best pose in the world. You know, he gets up there and he shakes a leg and he dances. Man, that's not that's not the posing. That's that's the icing on the cake. The meat of it, the entree, the battle is when I get on stage. I'm killing whoever's in my way. And that goes with my diet. It went with my training, it went with my cardio, no matter how much they thought I was cheating. I let people think I cheated, cheated all the time. You know, yeah, I have my little reward meals, but at the end of the day, I got on stage to win. And uh, so when a guy says, oh, you know, well, I'm just competing against myself. A guy like me, I'm going to whoop your tail every time. Good. You, you worry about you because I'm coming to take your back out. <laughs> you know, and, and my best friends, this is one of my best friends in, in bodybuilding, but he knew when I showed up on stage, no matter what we laughed about on that stage, me and Dexter going to go at it. I'm kicking and you want to kick mine to get me out the way. or I'm going to take your money, you know, and it's just a different, it's just a different way of training. And, and so, yeah, it's just naive, you know, the guys that say that. 
Yeah, for sure. So talk about, I mean, people do, a lot of people consider you to be one of the best or even the best poser of all time. And talk about that and what, what kind of, your, your routine is very different. It's very different from other routines. Uh, what what's inspiration behind it? My inspiration, um, you know, even the guys that I, I train now, I do, do posing you know, clinics and, and I teach. Um, it's not about being Melvin Anthony. It's, it's not about being marvelous. It's about almost like, um, how can I say? It? You create a meal for the judges to eat. Um, and so when you prepare your meal, you know, you put together your 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 seasoning. You know, you put together your spices. You cut your herbs up. You get decorative vegetables that you want to put on your plate. And then, you know, you get your sides, you know, and you get it all sauteed. And then you throw it on the floor in front of them, inspect them to eat it. Mm. That's posing. Mm -hmm. You you, you want to present your physique and you want to feed them to the where they can enjoy it with a fork. But it's presented correctly in front of them. But posing routines, you know, back, even back then, some of the guys didn't take it seriously. Um, so I was always known for, even in prejudging, I knew how to fight. I studied the guy next to me. I was never just worried about, oh, I'm just worried about me. Nah, hell no. Nah. You better worry about the guy on your left and on your right. Because when they call you out and put you into that ring, you better be ready to fight. Or you're going to get knocked out every time. So, you know, I learned and I was taught to create, you know, um, better body parts every time I got on stage. Mm -hmm. um, know what my best body parts were. And know the guy standing next to me. And if you don't know the guy, the guy you haven't seen, be able to assess his physique in second. Mm -hmm. And go, damn, he got legs, he got hamstrings, he got glutes. Oh, uh, his lower back. So I got to know which actual glutes I have. I got a smaller waist in it. So when we turn around to the back, I'm going to make sure I flare my lats all the way out and make it, and, and expose his flaws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These guys are not, you know, um, as well as they, they could be taught. So I was one of those guys that in posing, when it came down to being the best pose in the world, it all boiled down to your routine against my routine. And if they had a best poser award or uh, best entertainment award, I was going to get it because it was either 10, 15, 20 grand extra. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take it from you. And um, so me being the best or being said I was the best is only because I beat just about every guy that was in front of me when it came to posing. You know? And uh, so I never walked around saying, I'm the best poser in the world. I just made it my point to entertain the fans, show the judges why, why I'm supposed to win, and create something that, that even the guys that don't like me had to still applaud me. That was my goal every show. Mm -hmm. That's what made me great. I spoke to Kevin Leroni recently, and he told me he never practiced his routine. He just went on stage and kind of just vibe with the music. How much did you practice uh, before before your routine? I practiced for months, years. Uh, before a show, I would start creating my routine in about nine or so. Oh, wow. I would already have what music I wanted to come out to. I would already have you know, um, the poses that I wanted to portray and I have them written down. I want to, you know, front of bicep, I want to do a classic bicep and I want to do side chest and I want to do on this shot and I would go over my music. I would already create it before I was there. That way, when I got on stage, it was easy to go through it. It was like walking. Um, you know, Kevin, you know, if he did that, you know, that's, that's him. I never got away with that. You know, Kevin was a, was a, is a phenomenal bodybuilder. So anything he did, you know, they were going to applaud. But also, you can always see when a guy's thinking. While he's up there, he can be lip syncing, but then he's thinking at the same time, okay, now I think I want to do a back up bicep. He paused, and he do it. There's a difference between my routines and theirs. It was always, um, for me, I tried to be flawless. And if I made a mistake up there and put my foot in the wrong spot, you would never know it, because I knew how to hide them. I would knew how to hide my mistakes mm -hmm. in movement. Well, I, I strongly recommend everybody that's watching this to go and watch your routines on YouTube. Uh, 2005 Arnold Classic, Iron Man shows. I mean, those are real performances. 2001, 2006, Mr. Olympia. Uh, yeah, Australia, all of them. I, I used to turn up when I used to go to Australia. Ooh, Australian fans, them guys, they, you know, and in New York here, but Australia, them fans go crazy. When you do a routine, you know, you do something that they like or you do something to get them going, they go crazy. And I always, that was my best time uh, along uh, the battle uh, was the night show. You know? mm -hmm. that, that was, I look forward to, you know, creating something and then presenting it just to see how loud I can get them to get. <laughs> do you think Kai Green got inspired by your performances? Do you, do you see a little bit of, of, of you in, in his performances? 
I'm not sure. Um, Kai, you know, Kai is my boy. That guy right there, he's, I, I am I am also a fan of his. Mm-hmm. Um, when he came out, I watched him, you know, I watched him compete. Mm-hmm. And I watched him, you know, move on stage. And I was like, okay, that guy's got that. He's got that that thing. You know, it's a, it's a gift. He's got it. Um, natural talent to hear and feel music. Um, his creation, sometimes people would say, oh, yeah, maybe that's a little much, you know, but I always enjoy it. Um, but at the same time, I was also trying to whoop his behind when he got up there with us, you know, because I knew he was he was to be reckoned. You know, you had you had to you had to you got to battle a guy like that, you know. And John Brown was one of the first guys to tell me, he "Goes you gotta that dude right there. You better watch. Him. You want to fight that dude right there?" Yes. So I knew that even in opposing um, his emulation of certain poses that he had, he was a studier of. A bodybuilder. He watched the Ed Corners. He watched the Surgeon Brace. He watched the Arnold Schwarzenegger. He watched the, the Berto Foxes and the and the and the, um, and the uh, Sergio Olivas and the Lee Hayes. He studied how to move. So when you do it, when you do that, it, 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 it you could see it when you see a guy pose. So he had his own twists, but all that stuff was all handed down from the guys before us. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I don't know. I wouldn't say that he took that from. So no the, last, the, the last thing you would say, you would, the last thing that would get cut off is uh, the Kai Green. You say, you say potentially you saw some of the uh, influence. Yeah, the, you can always see the influences in his body. So you know, I wouldn't say he. Uh, he I was an influence. I wouldn't know. I, I'd never really asked Kai. Uh, I just know um, Kai is is uh, uh, isn't a what do you call that? An eccentric. He's very. Uh, mm-hmm. He thinks differently than a lot of people. Um, you know, he's a creator. He the guy can paint. He can draw. And just talking to him, you can tell, okay, people, some people go, that's strange. He's strange. He's not strange. If you listen to what he say, he's a deep thinker. Mm-hmm. So people like that, when he created something, he was always going to come off the cusp because that's his personality. Mm-hmm. Where my personality is, you know, I come more from the street. So, you know, I was into the street dancing and, and, and the pop locking and, uh, and all that. And I wanted to be in the, the, the newest dance that was out there at the time. But my creation, as far as my slow part, uh, I always wanted people to enjoy uh, my physique. So my first minute and a half, two minutes was always geared towards displaying my physique, the best ones that I had, my classic poses to show why I should win this show. So when you t- talk about, um, you know, being the greatest poser, um, I don't think I've ever lost a posing routine. I don't think I've ever lost as far as the, you know, the award. So that, that, that's what I guess people say, hey, he's the greatest because I never lost. And even back then, they say, well, you've never been in front of nobody. You know, well, Kai Green is better than you and Darren Charles is better than you. Well, we all was at the same show at the Arnold, and I got them all. You know, they were talking about Lee Priest is going to win it. He's talking about Kai Green's going to win it. They were talking about um, Darren Charles is going to get it and all these other guys, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, I came up with a trophy, so that made me undisputed. Um, but, I, but I do enjoy Kai Green. I, I've always enjoyed his physique, and, you know, we always just talk about, hey, man, when I come out, man, you know, you better be ready. And we used to laugh about it. We used to go over to Kuwait and we'd been over to these different places together. And me and Kai used to laugh about it. Like, well, come on with it. <laughs> you better hope you go on stage before I do. Because if you don't, I'm going to get you. You know, and we used to laugh about it. So, you know, if that's one thing that's missing in the sport. You know, these guys don't talk. You know, a lot of these guys, they don't, they don't, you know, they don't call each other. You know, they're so, uh, I would say selfish that some of the, I, I don't even know what name to call it. They're just so focused on themselves that they don't know that there's things that are happening around them that they can glean. There's information that they can glean off each other, mm-hmm. you know? So you can only be great by yourself if you only have the information that you got. But if you call, you know, a Flex Lewis or you call a Phil Heath or you call a Dexter Jackson, you call somebody you guys are talking about, it, you might get some extra information that you didn't know about, mm-hmm. you know, some new herb that came out that you didn't know about that I'm taking that you not. And you wonder why I keep whooping your behind, <laughs> you know? So that's things that we had in the nineties that they don't have. I don't, I don't see them doing today. I was just at Chris Cormier's show, and I never saw it. Outside of you, who do you consider to be the top five posers of all time, excluding yourself, that you admire? Uh, besides myself. Mm-hmm. You, being number, you being number one. Um, Kai Green, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Darren Charles. Mm-hmm. Um, and you talking about in this era or in that era? Any, any era. Um, a guy that's close that that really can I think that that I would put in there uh, would be uh, Terrence Ruffin, mm, yeah. uh, and this new kid that um you know I had the had the uh, the uh, opportunity to work with a little bit uh Sabor Favors, I can't say his name Sabor or Sabor he's good, 
Um, so those guys, I would I would throw out there um, as being one of the, some of the greatest guys um, in my area. Yeah, it would have been a Darren Charles, it'd been a Kai Green. Um, anybody else that stands out that came close? Mm, mm, that's that's probably about that's probably about it. Mm-hmm. That'd make five guys I would I would consider great. What about Sean Roden? Because I I saw somewhere that you helped him in 2016, I believe, uh, for his. I did. Um, I did. I helped him. He's a natural. Um, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, I could throw him in there for sure. Um, Sean Roden, he was a good mover. He had good balance. Um, yeah, he knew how to flow between his uh, transitions. So, yeah, he would that would that probably would cover it then. Sean Roden, Ty Green, Darren Charles, Terrence Ruffin and Sabor. That'd be five for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Now, you mentioned John Brown. Again, a lot of people don't know who that is. Can you, can you tell people who that? Because I, I understand he was your mentor, right, originally. Yeah, man. To this day, man, he still mentors me on things. Um, John Brown um, won the Mister Universe three times, he won the uh, the Mister Uni- uh, the Mister World uh, thing three times. Um, traveled all over the world, and he was known for putting on a show, um, as well as portraying his physique. So that was where I got my base. Um, he was the guy guiding me, telling me, "Hey, don't do this. Hey, do this. Don't do that. Hey, train this way. Don't you know eat this." And when it came down to you know to diets and stuff, but John Brown is one was one of the greatest posers probably ever stepped the stage. He was actually the first guy that really started to mix music together and blend the routines. They didn't back then. They weren't allowing guys to tape play more than one song. They were wanting to play what they wanted to play. So John really pushed that issue with the athletes to be able to play their songs and mix tapes together, making mixtapes. He was the first guy to do that. Was he, a, um, was he a coach in the beginning? He was my coach. He was my coach for, man, for years. All, pretty much, you know, he had his hands in, um, you know, giving me advice probably all the way through my career. Um, even when I had different gurus, you know, I had Chad Nichols and um, I had a few other guys. I had Hani Rambod, um, you know, training me, helping me. Um, and uh, I had another guy um, who was from Greece. Was it, was it, wasn't Milos your coach at one point? Milos helped me a bit too because I was in Milos' gym. So you know, like I said, I had a good team of guys around me at all times. You know, Milos, Milos helped me for the New York. So um, I had good influences from guys. Um, but John Brown was the main guy. I mean, James, John Brown had his had his influence with uh, Vince Taylor and Sean Ray training those guys. He even helped Milos back today. You know, t- talking to him about training. Um, John Brown had uh, Victor Richards. Mm-hmm. You know, and those, all those guys, you know, he told me when I was competing, I was like, man, you could be a pro easy. I was like, huh? You know, I didn't I didn't even know what I had. He goes, man, you, you listen to me, you'll go pro. You know, you do the right things. You train the way I tell you to train. You're going to go pro. You know, so he was one of the guys that influenced me to do that. But back then he was before his time. And he's telling me, yo, I don't know why they like you so much, man, because you're a little, you're a little cut up, boy, but they like you. And I'm like, I don't know why either, but, you know, you, you, I'm going to use what I got to get there. You know what I mean? Uh, so those that don't know, John Brown was one of the greatest bodybuilders ever. 